Hello, and welcome to my shot-by-shot -shot breakdown of our first look at Loki Season 2. And if you're looking for enthusiasm for this show, you've come to the right place. Uh, a lot of people, it seems, though, this morning just really couldn't get in the groove for Loki Season 2. Uh, the trailer, despite what I think is, is a phenomenal piece of work, didn't really set the world on fire. I mean, it is trending number one, so that's a positive. Uh, I think partially because there's just so much to talk about. Oh, we're going to have a good time. Buckle up. Uh, but a lot of people were, one, as they talked about it, said, you know, uh, that, you, that some of you just don't feel the same about Marvel, particularly the Disney Plus shows, after not just Secret Invasion, but for some of you, uh, She-Hulk, Ms. Marvel, and some of you are even throwing Hawkeye in there. Uh, I think that's a little harsh. I liked Hawkeye. Uh, I mean, it had a Christmas party finale, and an, it, it, what's not to love? I liked, I mean, the show was not top tier, but it was good. Uh, and I, I really feel Secret Invasion was awful. Uh, I, I, and I think that She-Hulk and Ms. Marvel, in my opinion, you know, they, they had their moments. I wouldn't just completely uh, disregard them like I would Secret Invasion. But anyway, how can I get excited for Loki season two? Some of you are wondering this. Well, first, the first reason is that I loved season one so much. And this looks like not only a return to form, but even better. You know, that's what you want your sequel to do. You want to give people what they loved, but plus it. So that's great. Also, the budget. Oh, it's all on screen. We, we really wondered where all that money went with Secret Invasion. But here, it's gone into the mise-en-scene. They even have some visual effects. Oh, it's exciting stuff. Then, not only is Loki comics accurate, but I would wager it's even better than the comics. I have bought every Loki solo title over the past few years, and they keep coming out with new ones because they all fail. They're like, all right, let's try with this creative team. And I'm like, not good. Uh, but this is amazing. This, to me, is pure, pure uncut Loki. Put it in my veins. And then, I love a good anti-hero. Ah, oh, yeah, some of you might know, the sorting hat put me into House Slytherin. Uh, and that, that our color is green, just like Loki's color. And so, you know, I really, I really vibe with the guy. I love his mischief. I love that he's a free agent. I, I, I just think he's fantastic. So that's another reason that this appeals to me so much. All right, so we have a lot to go over. And I think that, you know, we were all wondering how much Jonathan Majors would be in this trailer considering the legal issues that he's having. Now, of course, he has not been found guilty yet, uh, although the rumor is, is that the New York State uh, District Attorney has built a pretty substantial and significant case against him. But let's see. Although with other people, even though they have not been found guilty in court or their legal problems have gone away, uh, it hasn't worked for them. So I don't really know if Jonathan Majors can come back, uh, no matter what the court decides. And I think that's a, an important thing for us all to wonder about, you know, like even when the court decides. I mean, I don't know what the answer is, uh, but I think that this is something society is going to have to figure out. Uh, but anyway, the answer is not very much Jonathan Majors at all. He's hardly in this trailer. Uh, but he is going to be in the show. He's one of two villains, I'll tell you. And the other villain doesn't even rate the trailer. Uh, so I guess because I think it would be pretty easy to guess who, the secret behind the other villain. So maybe that's why they haven't revealed them. Uh, and then you know what else is missing? Very little romance. Where's the romance? There's more heat between Ravona uh, and, and Kang than there is between uh, Loki and Sylvie. I mean, I thought that was one of the nicest and coolest surprises about season one, and I thought it worked really well. I mean, I know he's kind of dating himself, you know, a variant of himself, but, you know, you know, uh, you know, gods have crazy stories all the time. I thought it was a nice relationship, but, you know, we'll see. This is just the first trailer. All right, so they, we uh, also the TVA is back, which is going to become a huge part of the MCU. It was weird the TVA didn't show up in uh, No Way Home and they didn't show up in Multiverse of Madness, but they are going to show up in Deadpool 3, which of course is also a multiverse movie with the Fox films, uh, and Matthew McFadden from Succession, Tom, uh, he will be playing a TVA agent. And Owen Wilson is rumored to show up as well. I hope they go to the TVA offices. Just because I love it there, growing up in New York City, I love offices and I love office complexes. And so I just like hanging out there. Uh, I love a good cafeteria or here an automat. So this is all just very great for me. This show is like made for me. So that's one of the reasons I like it so much. All right, here we go.
And of course, as always, share your own thoughts down below. Look at the set. Oh, I'm glad that they built some new spaces in the TVA. And then, of course, don't forget, well, we'll see what happens, but we ended Loki season one in a different timeline. So that I was a variation on the TVA that we'd gotten to know in the first show. So maybe their offices just look different. Uh, the library area looked the same with, of course, a very different statue. Uh, but yeah, so this is, uh, they're, cl they're clearly in the basement, but they still, uh, I like this part, by the way, too. I mean, this is so great. This looks like backstage, like at a stadium. I don't know if you watch Winning Time about the, uh, the starting of the, or the remaking of the Lakers. Starts season two uh, this month in August. Uh, I love that show, but this is gorgeous. I mean, talk about taking a space, which is clearly a real space, but designing it and adding a lot of uh, production design to make it seem like the set that you want it to be. Uh, I mean, maybe the whole thing is a set from scratch, but it's just, it's stunning. I feel so like a real place. I feel like I'm on the line for a ride. Oh, here it comes. Pre-show, pre-show excitement. So they're, hey, they're like, hey, hey QB. And I love the way he comes down. Isn't that great? I, loved if, I would love it if his lab was multi-levels. Although maybe he's working on something. That's what's going on there. All right, so uh, K.Y. Kwan is the kind of guy who would know everything in the, in the space, like what he does with it. And this does, of course, also look very much like Everything Everywhere All at Once, the movie that put K.Y. Kwan back on the map. Oh, but look at that. I love the visual effect of what we find out is called time slipping. Oh, it's so great. It looks painful. It looks like something really significant is happening and like that needs to be fixed. And I, you know, it's not only the visual effects that are selling it, but Tom Hiddleston's performance, the way he just seems so strained. And it's just perfect for this show. Oh, I just absolutely adore it. It has slight horror vibes to it. Very quirky. I love it. Uh, it's so nice to see something making the right choices. Look at the way he almost like dances off camera. It's a little, it reminds me of when Calvin and Hobbes used to dance. <laughs> I always love that. I was like, everyone should dance like that. Oh, that's great. And I like that K.Y. Kwan is just like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> and so Wilson's like, that's what we need help with. And K.Y. Kwan is like, oh, that's called time slipping. <clears throat> I know, he knows what it is. He's seen it before. And he's like, can you fix it? And he goes, no. <laughs> that's great. Uh, K.Y. Kwan looks phenomenal here. Oh, it looks so good. Note the green in his uniform. Now, that's very interesting. The TVA colors are orange and black, orange and like, brown, as you know. I have a TVA jacket, one of my prized possessions. Uh, thank you, Disney, for sending that to press. Uh, I believe it's available for anyone to purchase now. Uh, but Loki's color is green, as we were just discussing. Now, uh, he's called QB, but he's actually Ouroboros. That's, that's the rumor that he's been playing. I've heard that as well. And Ouroboros uh, it's a, not only uh, sometimes showed up in Marvel to some degree, but not really. But what's more interesting is that in Norse mythology, he is a serpent, but he's also the son of Loki. So I wonder if through all the variant and time shenanigans, this is Loki's son or somehow related to him. Oh, wouldn't that be great? They do have similar hair. Oh, I love it. This would be great. I also like uh, K.Y. Kwan's glasses. I have glasses like that. Looks good. Uh, so yeah, and by the way, what a huge missed opportunity not to bring Short Round back for Indiana Jones. I mean, Indiana Jones was already way into production by the time Everything Everywhere All at Once became a big deal. But I mean, I would, I'd be like, well, let's do one more with Short Round because how can you not? I mean, I need to see it. All right. So he's like, oh, time slipping can't happen in the TVA. And I love that Owen Wilson says, yeah, but we just saw it happen. <laughs> that reminds me of what it's like dealing with bureaucracy. I love it. I love this stuff. All right, so see what it says repairs and I think advancements or something. Oh, that's funny. So like repairs, he'll fix things, but he'll also plus it for you. And again, uh, this role has been described as the Q, uh, you know, James Bond's Q of the TVA. That looks great. But obviously a lot less slick, which I think is very charming and personable. Oh, it's fantastic. All right, so, ooh, that's the colors of the TVA. Look, we get more amazing time slipping. Oh, it's so great. And then look at this brilliant juxtaposition. So he finally slips out and he's in front of, these are called, I had to look up what this was, what the actual term for it was. This is a wind sock dancer. And this being in a parking lot with that and having that juxtaposition, it reminds me of Barry. I'm like, let's get Bill Hader in here. He would fit with this show perfectly. And then here, is he like in the 80s maybe? Is he jumping around in time? Or the 70s, because we've seen uh, Sylvie uh, working at a McDonald's from that time period. So maybe that's what happens. Oh, I love it. McDonald's date. 
All right, so he seems like he's getting real tired of that boy. Uh, he jumps again, he jumps again, but look at this, that's him! That's him in the background and that's him in the front looking some, in some kind of manual. He's like, and he's by himself, this Loki. So it's like, whoa, can he fix it alone? But look, it gets even more interesting. So he looks back, he's like, who was there? But look at the timeline, this is very important. So there's a whole bunch of spaghetti threads, right? Just a whole bunch of them being forced into some kind of device or, or event and then streamlined when they come out the other side. And this is something that's mirrored elsewhere in the trailer. So very important, and a little bit of clue as to what's going on, sorting out the timelines. In fact, I heard that's what the villain is trying to do. You know, after Sylvie killed Kang, or the he, he Who Remains, that version of uh, Kang, uh, it, it, she broke out the multiverse. So very, so very, or got it out of control and created a whole lot of new timelines. And I wonder what she's dealing with here. She seems to be, I'm not, I wonder where that is. I don't think that's the break room at McDonald's. But boy, there's something crazy talking about squigglies. It looks a little bit like the time slipping effect too. I wonder what's, hmm, I wonder what's, and you can see on the right there, there's also strands there. And you'll see that theme a little bit later. Hmm. <clears throat> That's a crazy mullet, Sylvie. She's like, she really seems to be discouraging a romance with Loki. She's like, I know, I'll give myself a mullet. And he's like, I don't care. It looks great on you, baby. All right, so look, he's pruning this wall, which of course has the lie of the timekeepers. And when he gets rid of it, it reveals, maybe this isn't the new TVA, so he's given him a shortcut. It reveals Kang, the real founder of the TVA. Although in the very version that he was in, although there seems to be another face there on the right. I want, oh, I think that's the other Kangs, you know, the Council of Kangs. Ooh, that's interesting. That's very interesting. But, you know, there was a giant Kang statue, so I guess maybe he's in a different space or something. You know, and when he, at the end of the other one. So look at this elevator. That's a crazy elevator. I wish I could see the, what that poster said behind them. Uh, and look, I don't know why he has to use his foot to, I mean, like that seems very unhygienic and not appreciated by the next person in the elevator. All right, so look, they come out. I love that. And they're at the World's Fair and I looked it up because there have been a couple of World's Fair. I wish we still had World's Fairs. What a wonderful thing for society. And also Disneyland um, really was built out of their World's Fair endeavors. Helped pay for it. Uh, and help create the test, testing ground for a lot of the attractions. Uh, but anyway, this is the 1893 World's Fair in Chicago. Uh, so that's uh, this. So that's why they're dressed the way they are, and it's a real World's Fair that really had that Ferris wheel. Oh, it's so cool. Uh, and uh, they've gotten snacks. Oh, 1893 snacks. They, popcorn. It's t a timeless staple. No matter where Loki goes, he knows he can always find a delicious cone of popcorn. So I like that uh, uh, Mobius is describing the difference in their approaches. So he says, you're a man of action. And look, oh, I love that he's using more uh, of his powers. And you know, it's subtle, but it is very effective. And I do love the sparkle. Oh, green sparkle. And look, so he attacks this actor. And we'll go into that a little bit later as to who this actor is. It's from the movie premiere that we see. And it's a Marvel character. And it's a little bit of a Jekyll and Hyde persona. So I think this fight's going to get real interesting. But anyway, as they do the blast, they do a great cut to the blowing Kang out of the presentation, it looks like. So that's, that's a very good cut. I love when they do that. It's a good misdirect. Uh, so that's Kang. And then look, it's a green pie, key lime pie, which fits with the theming of Loki. Looks a little chemically, but that's fine. I mean, you know, it's cafeteria food. I mean, I'm sure it's delicious. Although I've given up sugar, so I have to go and look for something else to eat there. But it looks great. It's just a great choice. And uh, Mobius is saying, I'm very deliberate. And I think about it. I have an intellectual approach, which I think is hilarious. And then, speaking of juxtaposition, they then cut to this new line of him just saying, this is really great pie, which is not really stimulating intellectual conversation. But by Jove, maybe it is good pie. Uh, so look, it's all pie. They're all, it's all pie there. I think that's great. I wonder if it's all key lime pie. And so I get looks like it is. I wonder why he would select just that one. Uh, as many as some of you said in my trailer reaction, who doesn't love an automat? Uh, they used to have these, uh, even until like just a, maybe about 10 years ago in New York City. They're so cool. You put, uh, you put um, some money in the slot, which unlocks the, uh, the compartment, and then you can take the food out, and then it's refilled from the other side. And usually you look in all the little windows, and you can choose what you want because there's variety. Uh, but it's awesome. And hey, Loki's eating pie too. That's great. He's a good sport, Loki. He doesn't seem to be enjoying the conversation, though. 
I think maybe he wants me to do something that Mobius maybe won't. Maybe that's why he's saying they have different approaches. All right, so look, they're at a movie pre premiere for something called Zaniac. Now, Zaniac is a very obscure Marvel character uh, sent to Earth by Dormammu, interestingly enough. Uh, and while he was first a, a man called Tom L uh, Malvern, who became the Jack the Ripper, you know, it's, you know, comic books like to sometimes mix history, and they're like, you think it was just regular history, but it was actually this comic book character. But later on, it was somebody named Brad Wolf who filmed at a radioactive site, some kind of independent student film kind of in the comics, and then turned and was possessed by the Zaniac. Uh, and so I think that's what's going on here. The star, Brad Wolf, confirmed by somebody's sign in the crowd later in this trailer, Brad Wolf is playing the Zaniac, but he actually is the Zaniac. So we'll see uh, how that's a problem. I wish Kingo was in this movie. I loved Kumail Nanjiani. He was my favorite part of Eternals. That and uh, Richard Madden's superpowers, Superman-like superpowers. Uh, but I wish that Kingo was in this. And he, Kumail Nanjiani would fit with this quite well. Although he guess, just guest starred in um, Obi-Wan. So we don't want to go too, to have too much. I think he, isn't he nominated for that performance or something? All right, for an Emmy. All right, so there's Hunter B-15, still in the field, but now it seems uh, maybe she's been promoted to the level of Owen Wilson's character, right? She no longer seems to be a, a timekeeper, a, you know, a, a TVA hunter. Uh, but she, she looks great. I love this actress. This is uh, Wunmi Musaku. Uh, she was actually also in a Lovecraft country with Jonathan Majors. And so uh, good to see that her, uh, she's still in there. She's still in the mix. I think she's waiting for a really big breakout role. Uh, maybe it'll be this season. So there's Sylvie working at McDonald's of classic vintage McDonald's. She seems to be doing quite well there. She's got a lot of stars on her name tag. Uh, that's phenomenal. I love that they did this. And if they want to promote this, kind of like Barbie, maybe they can do pop-up vintage McDonald's. Uh, I think who wouldn't like that? And McDonald's could participate. You can get real McDonald's food. All right. So there she is in action. She's got a very Loki type blade. So we'll see what's going on here. You can, so you can see there's Mobius in the background. The team's back together again. So there they are, they're fighting the actor there, fighting him again. See, so he can take quite a bit, so there's clearly something otherworldly about him. Now there is He Who Remains his uh, abode, and it's not looking so good, you know? I mean, it's really fallen into disrepair quickly after Sylvie killed him off. And you can see, look at the, the multiverse behind there. I mean, it's just all over the place. All right, now I love this bit where he's like, is that a crack in my space suit? And he puts uh, duct tape on it. But I got to tell you, they really use duct tape to fix a lot of stuff like that, even in real life scientific situations. Duct tape is a miraculous thing. Everyone should have a roll of duct tape. That reminds me, I should go get one. I used to have one, but I don't right now. So he's going out, it looks to fix the timeline. That looks like the device that's putting all the timelines into one and controlling them. So I think it's a big no-no. So that's interesting that you see it on the screen earlier and you see it literally in person here. I wonder if there's someone down there that looks like there's some kind of device down there. That is really cool. That is quite the exhaust pipe on the back of that suit. Whoa, this looks like a cool scene. All right, so the Loki's flipped some kind of switch here with, with panache. I love the pop collar. And he takes out, I wonder if that's the guy, the actor. Down he goes. And then here, speaking of going down, there goes the monitor. Not the monitor. And now they're in the automat. And Sylvie says, uh, oh, look, she has like Dr. Fate type symbols on her ear. That's ear uh, earrings. That's interesting. But she says, we're playing God. I, I mean, I guess because, you know, she's always been very sensitive about pruning because, of course, <clears throat> they tried to prune her. Um, and he, this looks like the TVA. Again, you can see all the clocks on the walls like you've seen before. This looks like, like maybe like, it looks like a classroom or a lab. Uh, and Loki says, we are gods. They are literally gods, both of them. They're both Loki variants. But you'll see that Loki is not so sure himself just very later in this very trailer. So look at this, look at this use of his powers. He creates two shadows and he's just controlling it with his glowy eyes. Ah, oh, that's great, so Loki. And they restrain Brad Wolf. What is that, like a, a super pruner? So there's, there's Ravona, Ravona Renslayer. We just saw her disappear at the end of season one, but she's up to something. Uh, her path is obviously colliding with Kang, and of course they're a couple. They have, they're a tumultuous couple, but they're a couple in the comics, so we always knew that they were on a collision course. So I wonder what that device does. It's obviously not a good reading. 
Uh, so the timeline is running out. And he says, how do we know who to, like, who to kill and who to, who, who to save? Uh, there's uh, Hunter uh, B-15, by the way, in another getup. Very interesting. Wonder what she's doing there. There also, we saw him. Remember, that's the guy who didn't know what a fish was. And so there it says, marry me, Brad Wolf. So that's who that actor is. It's confirmed. They're on that sign. Uh, and there's Ravona. She too is at the World's Fair to see Kang speak. And here we go. Now, I like the fact that Loki is saying, how do we decide? Who, how am I to decide who lives and who dies? And they cut to Kang, who is a villain because he has absolutely no problem making that decision. And everyone's like, whoa, your lack of hesitation and remorse over having to make this decision sets off a lot of alarm bells. And so uh, I think that's great editing. And so there's Kang. And he says, there he is. And what a light show. What a light show. I mean, that is a presentation. I'm impressed. I love that stuff. And then Miss Minutes here is like a ghost Miss Minutes, obviously working for Kang here with his Victor Timely persona and, and helping, uh, you can see Ravona's with him, hoping, helping uh, Kang and Ravona. Scaring everybody away. And look, he says, war is coming. And there's a bunch of Kangs. And Kang, remember, explain that to Loki. So maybe this is the beginning with Loki telling them what's going on. Maybe that is the beginning because it's the same outfit that he was wearing at the end of season one. And as you can see here, he has his arm is injured. Hmm, I wonder exactly what's happening here. But there's uh, K.Y. Kwan as well. I'm glad he's got lots to do. It's looking bad. But nice eye light for everybody. Uh, then there's Eugene Cordero again. And there's some kind of, it's really, everything's falling apart here. And then they cut right to this. Th Thank you for your service. Miss Minutes has fired you. And look at all those threads around the screen here. I wonder who's creating all those threads. You know, they look similar to what Sylvie was seeing in that back room. And there's Ravona. She looks like she's in the uh, place you go when you get pruned, right? Maybe she's going back to where he who remains was. Hmm, that's interesting. That's very interesting. And then uh, I, I, I'm with uh, Mobius, the rumor is, is that we're going to find out more about Mobius's backstory, you know, how he became a TVA agent, because we know they were all real people before the TVA uh, drafted them. So, and we know a little bit about his backstory, so I'm curious to find that out and to see that. And he says, you're the god of mischief. You've got to be able to do something. And look, so look at all these uh, uh, time hunters coming in here. <clears throat> I heard that they are working for one of the villains. They're rogue time agents. This is so cool. What a great building. What a, the, set, the set person really outdid themselves. This looks like maybe some kind of museum usually, and there would usually be exhibits in the middle there. Looks like a, like a shipbuilder kind of thing, because it looks like a ship inverted. You know, it's very cool. Looks Norse, which makes sense, because Loki is a Norse god. All right. And there he's taking on some rogue TVA agents, or maybe they're regular TV agents. Maybe he's the rogue. We'll find out. There he's using his powers. They look great. Green sparkle. Woohoo. And he goes, always have been, always will be when it comes to the god of mischief. And they're like, yeah, you are. And then we go to a little blip here. And he says, I think that was overkill. And he get, created two duplicates of himself. I guess that's maybe where the shadows are coming from on the wall, right? And of course, one of his uh, doppelgangers totally agrees that it was the right call because, you know, he's a Loki. And then we get a lot of really quick stuff happening here. So that, I believe, is K. Huy Quan because that matches the green uh, accents on his uniform that we've been seeing. So he's activating some kind of emergency button. Uh, then Loki falling. I love the way this is edited. Uh, you just see a lot of really beautiful shots. I appreciate the care that's taken with the cinematography and the framing. I wonder if, I can't quite tell, is that the actor, Brad Wolf, if they brought him back in some kind of TVA prison? And then here, oh, I love, this is our trio. Again, back together, and they're uh, doubling up on their uh, green sparkly power. And that's Disney Plus. Ah, uh, October 6th, that's a Friday, but a lot of times, Disney Plus shows will sometimes start on a Friday uh, and then go back to Wednesday. That happened with uh, Obi-Wan, for instance. So we don't know for sure what it's going to be weekly, but it will debut on a Friday. It looks just incredible to me. So how do you feel about it, especially now that we've gone through it in depth? Are you feeling any better? Are you still still a little bit too badly burned from the previous uh, Disney Marvel Plus show, uh, Marvel Disney Plus shows? Uh, share those thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.